Hey guys, I'm Davey Wavy, and I'm here with Nate Grimes. Hey. Hey, I'm Nate Grimes. What's up? <laughs> when did you realize that this was like something that you could do or you wanted to do? You know, when I was younger, when I started having sex in my teens, I was definitely more of a bottom and was pretty good at taking big dicks and bigger toys that kind of just led into the direction of getting fisted and. How much of it do you think is like a desire for large objects and how much do you think is it like an innate ability that you have? I mean it Can definitely requires it definitely requires training. Okay. Um, it took me a while to train to take a fist. One of the reasons was the person who was training me had very large hands. That was challenging. Okay, so like is my fist like how would this be? Your hand your yeah, you have small hands. So yeah. that would be like a good training fist. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, when you're fisting someone, you want it more like that than um, oh. like that. Okay, well, this that's why little, we're doing this video. This is a little bit more of an advanced oh, okay. uh, <laughs> shape, and this is going to be how you ease someone into it. Well, that's a perfect segue because this is a video for people watching to get started with fisting. So, how to fist? How to fist? If someone's getting started, uh -huh. what advice would you have for them in terms of like, do you just start with a fist or do you? So if I am stretching out a bottom, like okay. if I'm this on hypothetical top, bottom right. who may or may not be sitting I'm next top, to you right now, right? Okay. Um, if I have a hole that I'm working on, the first thing I want to do is you know lube up, uh, get a lot of lube on my fingers. Um, most fisters use a water-based lube um, because it's easy to mix up and it's easy to have a lot of it. Okay, so because my go-to would have been a silicone-based lube because they're so much more slippery. Right, it is slippery, but fisters like to use um, J-Lube. Um, there's some other water-based lubes that come in like a powder form and you mix it with water. <gasps> so it's cheap, like you have a lot of powder and you mix it in a bottle with water and you're able to make like a lot of lube that you can kind of just keep reapplying Ooh. throughout. Like. How much might one expect to use in a session? Are we talking like a half cup of lube or like? Uh, a cup. A cup. At, at least usually, yeah. If I'm getting fisted for like 30 minutes to an hour, like I usually, like I, I use like a water bottle, like a squeezy water bottle. It's like 16 ounces, I think. I don't use the whole thing, but I use oh, like oh, half, okay. I use like half to like three quarters of yeah. that. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's still a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, lube's not cheap. So. I mean. This is an expensive right. hobby right. you have. When you guys were doing it, there mm -hmm. were certain positions that you went into. Mm -hmm. For example, you did one of these. Right. Like this, that yeah. seemed to be your go-to. It's funny, because it's not. Okay. Like, I rarely get fisted on my back. Um, I'm usually getting fisted doggy style, because it's just easier for me to like open up. And does that vary person to person? It or? does vary person to person. Okay, so there's not yeah, like a specific definitely. position yeah. to try. For a bottom, like being able to relax is really important, especially if you're new to getting fisted. So like whatever position is best for you in order to relax. I can only think of two positions though, doggy style and then on your back. Right. Are there other positions in which one gets fisted? Yes. Uh, but they're definitely more advanced. Oh, but tell us anyway. I mean, something to work up to. On the floor, like right here, with their whole like up, and like someone is here, like fisting them, like into the hole, <gasps> like that. Oh, it's, girl. like really intense. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, it's best to start with you know, one finger, two finger, three finger. Um, when I'm going into someone, I kind of like stack my fingers like this. Um, so like if I'm going into someone's hole, like. The hole is like oval shaped, it's not perfectly round. So it's more of an oval. So there's more space at the top and the bottom. So I'm going to go in like this, and as I go in, I'm gonna feel the hole kind of expand, mm -hmm. like around these fingers. I'm gonna be able to stretch it that way. So I can use three fingers or I can use up to four. So that's actually more easier to get into someone than going like that? At the beginning, yeah, like it can be easier to go like this and then kind of collapse like that because what you want to do is you want to get up to like this point, right? Because like that's the widest part of your hand. Okay. Without the thumb. Like once you get a bottom up to like this point, that's going to be as wide as you can go without like tucking your thumb in. Okay. So that's going to be like a good warm up that's going to let me know as a top like how much more I need to like loosen him up. I'm on the bottom, it's going to let me know like generally how big is his hand? Wow. How much more do I need to like loosen up and push? Is this called something? Is this like the goose? I, I mean, the goose. It kind of looks like that. Yeah, and I've, I've never referred do to. Do they it do as like such. little like hand puppets <laughs> like, with their fisting? You know? I mean, some people might. Yeah. You know, it's like getting a butt plug in. Once you get past the biggest point, 
it's kind of like all downhill and you kind of just like your head will just kind of like fall in okay you know is there a safe depth to like how far someone should go i mean that's just going to be as the top reading your bottom like communicating um reading their body language asking them what feels good what doesn't feel good um i'm much more attuned to depth than i am to width so i'm pretty deep Okay. Like I can get fisted like to the elbow, past elbow on um, certain people. But what I'm limited by is if a guy has really, really thick forearms, I can't go that deep because his arms are oh too thick. Oh my god. Thick. If someone's that deep inside you, mm -hmm. do you feel things shifting? Yeah. I mean... Wow, this is so... In a, in a subtle way, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because that's what you're doing is you're, you're rearranging the anatomy. Like, you have the colon, and then you have the S colon, and then you have the descending colon, transverse colon, ascending colon. Like, I'm so overwhelmed. Yeah. I feel like there's going to be an exam after this. There's an, there's there's an, an anatomy lesson that... So they're through your second hole. Yes. Okay. Like, that's into your S colon. The challenging thing with depth is for the top to be able to be able to read the turns of the colon um, mm. and for the bottom to be able to relax through that movement and through organ being rearranged. If this is your first time as a bottom, it may make sense to find a top who is more experienced. Oh yeah. So that they're like helping you safely oh, yeah. navigate this in a way that's still fun and exciting because yeah. like if it's your first time, you don't need to be there first time. Absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. The guy who trained me was first and he would work on my hole and And you could work on his. Yeah, and then I would work on his and like I kinda of learned both roles at the same time. But there's a logistical element that's probably like oh, just a little bit nasty but it feels mm. like it's worth mentioning. You have to clean out very thoroughly, mm. right? Like that's part of the process. Mm. Yeah. Um, do you have any recommendations for mm -hmm. shower enema? Yeah, I mean, I would use a shower enema. Toys always helped me kind of get the water out. Mm -hmm. um, as I've grown older and my hole has gotten bigger, and douching for me is a lot easier now and takes a lot less time. Oh, you're so quick. You just because I'm open, like, yeah. it just moves through. You were like, are we filming in five minutes? Okay, <laughs> hold my smoothie. <laughs> Here I go. For people who are new, definitely, like, budget time in the shower to be able to um, to get ready. And the other thing about toys is that it can not only help you get the water out, but it can help you um, warm your hole up. That'll tell you like, oh, am I clean? You know, yeah. 12 inches deep. Great, like that's a good that's a good indicator of you know when it's time to start a session or if you need more time prepping. I got close to fisting someone once, and as I got more fingers into them, mm -hmm. I think right around like the fourth finger, I started to hear noises from his hole. Yeah, I started to hear like like just some air coming out. Air coming out. Yeah. Is that a normal part part of the? Because I started to get nervous that if there's air coming out, well then there must be like poop coming down. No, I mean, not if he's pretty clean, like... Yeah, he was fine. Yeah, I was definitely... that's a normal thing. Okay, so you'll hear that. You'll hear that. And if you, you hear might, it, don't yeah. freak out. Some people have, like, Windy noisy holes. holes that you know, when you put, like, your ear to a shell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It kind of sounded like that. Like the ocean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So during today's scene, which you guys can see on Himorose.tv, you use... Mm -hmm. Also goose-like. Yeah, I think the toy's name is actually Long long Neck. Slightly smaller than a fist, I guess, right? Right, right. Well, so if you look at the design of this toy, it's actually shaped like an arm, you know? Right. Like it's shaped- A like, really smooth- It's shaped like a smooth, slender arm with a small fist. So this toy is designed to help someone not only take a fist, but like open up a little bit deeper and get the fist in through the second hole and start training for depth. So that's why this toy is shaped as it is. And what I love about this is like you don't need anyone to be practicing with this. Can, can you fist yourself? I can fist myself, yeah. Is there anything you can't do? I mean... No, no. <laughs> I can't in this position. I can't on my knees. Like, I can kind of do like a reach around. Okay. I've seen videos of guys who can do it like this, and it's like, I don't know how. I can't, like, get enough. My so, arms aren't long enough, or my torso is too long, or. Something to work up to. Something that was really apparent during your scene that you guys did was it almost felt spiritual. Mm -hmm. And there's something, like, sacred about it. Does that sound stupid? I mean, no, because like to me, like fisting is very kind of magical and spiritual and something that can be very like tender and intimate between people because on the one hand, as a bottom, you have to be able to relax and you have to be able to trust your top. And as a top, you have to be able to um, have some intuition and mm -hmm. empathy in order to take your bottom on 
that journey. Um, any other tips on fisting that, that people should consider? Take your time, don't rush. And if like you want to be like a all-star fisting bottom, like train often. Like, it's like any other sport. Yeah, it's yeah. like being it's like being at the gym. It's like any other muscle. 